Hey, thanks for attending today's webcast, Replacing SureTrack with Fast Track Schedule. My name is Serge Glukov, and I'll be presenting today's topic. And we do have a large audience today, and we're going to get started here in a couple of minutes. The webcast is scheduled for 30 minutes. So any questions you have during the presentation, please feel free to type them in, and we'll address them at the end of the webcast. But let's go ahead and uh, get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Serge Glukov, Vice President of Sales at AEC Software. I've been with AEC for over 12 years, and in that time, clients have ranged from industries uh, such as the AEC, architects, engineers, and contractors, software hardware developers, government agencies, government contractors, the aerospace industry, and Fortune 1000 companies. I am a certified project management professional uh, from the Project Management Institute, and during this time, I've uh, been project lead of our software localization and globalization since 2002. Now about our webcast today. Uh, so the reason why we wanted to create this webcast is because we had seen a steady flow of customers of ours switching from uh, SureTrack to FastTrack Schedule. And a lot of the reasons for switching uh, varied. Some wanted a easier to use product, one less expensive, uh, one that was compatible with Windows 7. But we felt that it'd be a good idea to sort of capture um, these reasoning and similarities between the two products and provide us, provide a webcast for everyone to view. And hopefully um, this will help you out to evaluate our products and see if it's the right fit. Now, it's also important to notice though that Although Fast Track Schedule is a great replacement for SureTrack, they are inherently two different applications. They're not the same. So the objective, again, of today's presentation is to show many of the similarities between the two programs. So what we're going to be going over today, uh, three areas. First is the background on SureTrack and Fast Track Schedule, which I'm sure many of you already know of. The second is going to be a project schedule workflow. It's the best way to compare the two programs. And third is certainly the benefits. Why make that switch? What's the compelling reason to switch from a tool like SureTrack to FastTrack Schedule? So a bit of background on SureTrack and FastTrack Schedule. SureTrack developed by Primavera. Um, when it was released, it was released for $299 a license, and it was a Windows-only product. And a lot of people don't know that Primavera was the original developer. Um, now it certainly goes by Oracle Primavera. Uh, but yeah, Primavera was the first developer in marketing behind the product. Fast Track Schedule, well, AEC Software, we've developed, marketed, and sold the product uh, for quite some time. And it's all been done here through our local offices in Virginia. Our development staff, customer support, tech support, uh, sales office is all located here in Virginia. And when we released Fast Track Schedule, it was released at a price of $179. It is Windows and Macintosh compatible. And Faster Schedule is the number one project management application on the Mac platform. Now, how long ago did they release SureTrack? Well, what I can tell you is that the number one show at the time was Friends. So if you take a second and you think about it, that had to have been 1994. And with Fast Track Schedule, when was it released? Maybe this sweater or watch will date the Cosby Show. The year was 1988. So that's my Casey Kasem uh, reference. Uh, let's move on. So let's look at 2008 and 2010 with SureTrack. Big news for 2008 was Oracle acquired Primavera and all its products. And we saw the, the list price of SureTrack jump up to $1,000. Now certainly it was a thousand dollars plus, and that included support, but much bigger jump than its original price tag. And in 2010, in December 2010, I'm sure many of you know that Oracle then ceased the sale and support of SureTrack as well as P3, but they did provide you with a path forward. That was to jump to P6. Now that didn't sit well with a lot of people, uh, mainly because uh, it was a lot, much bigger price tag. It's about $2,500 for a license of P6 plus $500, $600 for support and any back-end um, hardware software that you might need to add to your IT infrastructure. And if we look at Fast Track Schedule in those years, 2008 and 2011, still being developed by AEC Software here in the, in the United States and Virginia, the price tag of the product is at 
And in that time, we released our latest version, which is Fast Track Schedule 10. And that was actually last year in 2010. So not terribly too much has changed with Fast Track Schedule. And if we look at the Project Schedule workflow, this is really the best way to compare these two products. Now, when we announced that we were going to have a webcast that compared Fast Track and SureTrack, we did receive a lot of feedback and support from customers and potential clients about the software and how, what we should look at comparing them. Uh, we've actually implemented and integrated a lot of the feedback we received. And there's also some stuff that we were unable to add in on a 30 minute uh, window. But the best way for us to compare this is really to look at three phases of a project schedule. That's the creation, management, and presentation of your schedules. Now within these phases, these triangles, for creation, we'll see that there's an ease of use. How is someone becoming comfortable with the product? And then what about the resources? How are they allocating to projects? But what about the project details? What does my project, what is my project made up of? And then you have your management. That's going to be reporting, uh, revisions, and even calculations to your schedule. And finally, your presentation. How are you communicating this to your clients, to your stakeholders? What images are you using to relate these messages? And how is this being presented? In what format? Now, managing and presenting are somewhat iterative because you can always be switching the two uh, spots. So I can be managing and then presenting, but they have to revise, come back to managing the project, revising it, running more reports, and then representing it. So it's not as straightforward as, uh, or as linear as we show here. So let's take a look at the creation portion here with SureTrack. And there's seven areas really that we want to focus a bit on. And that's going to be your user interface. How is somebody going to be navigating around the program? Uh, your site lines, your dependencies, links, and constraints, the bars and milestones, what makes up that Gantt chart, your resources, the task data, how is it entered, how is it modified, and the activity codes. And activity codes is a big part of SureTrack. So what we like to do now is we'll open up Fast Track Schedule and we'll take a look at Fast Track. The first thing you'll see here in Fast Track Schedule is a blank file. Now, what's important though is to draw your attention to the, the interface here. Up top here, we have adopted the ribbon interface. And the ribbon interface uh, was first introduced by Microsoft. And although we were the first project management, project scheduling application to adopt the ribbon a few weeks before Microsoft did with Project 2010. But the thing that I'd like to draw your attention to, even more so, is the fact that if you're coming from SureTrack and you're not comfortable with this ribbon, that's okay. In Fast Track Schedule, we provide you with the option of switching the layout or the interface to a classic menu bar. And this will allow you to navigate with maybe more comfort in the product and not as much of a steep learning curve if you're not familiar with ribbon. The three main views of Fast Track Schedule are going to be your schedule view, your calendar view and your resource view. Oh, and we also have a print preview. We'll show that a little bit later. So now that we've talked about the interface and how easy it is to navigate and the options you have, let's take a look at a existing schedule. So open this toll road project. And again, comparing the things that we looked at in SureTrack, we're going to jump into looking at the tasks. Okay. So you'll notice that in the activity name column, I have three blank rows. And we'll just type in some of the data, some of our tasks. Say written proposal. Timeline graph. And lastly, OK. Now these guys are all on the same outline level. Now naturally, we want this to be part of the RFP process, so we'll indent them. In faster schedule, you always have two or three ways of doing one thing. So for example, if I want to indent this, I can simply click in front of the W in written and hit the tab button on my keyboard. Or I can just highlight my rows and indent them. Look at activity codes. We can enter activity codes as well. So activity codes, if I open up the column here and get some information on it, we look at that it's a value list. So we can create our own lists and restrict them to only these options. So I can just simply pick and choose. For dates, dates are easy, tasks are easy to enter in here. Straightforward way is going to be for you to just choose a start date. 
So if I come here to June and then pick a finish. But the much easier way of doing it is just simply by adding durations. Okay. The next step here is going to be talking about dependencies, linking and constraints. Now, to link these tasks together, okay, we have a few different ways of doing this. The first is we can simply draw our links together. There we go. The easiest way, highlight them all and just click on our link tool. And there we go. Now all the tasks that are supposed to be linked together are linked. But what about constraints? How do we how do we show those? Again, there are a couple of different ways of doing that. One is we can add a column for constraints or we can double click on a task and come to our constraint type. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do as late as possible. And you notice that that jumps over. And if I scroll over, I can see exactly where it's been put. And we can link these two guys together. And there we go. Okay, so that is our constraints, links, and dependencies. And what about resources? Well, we jump over to our resource view. We can see all the resources that are currently assigned to our tasks or available to be assigned. Now, in FastTrack Schedule, there is definitely a litany of information available. Double clicking here or just single clicking into our information form cell gives us all the information on our resource. Now, in this case here, a couple things just to, to mention, you can enter your rates, your costs, any detail and description of your resource, your work calendar as well, make any exceptions, adoptions of any other calendars, you can always add and assign them, and any other notes um, or columns you want to add. But what's really neat about this is that your image comes over. And why that's important, it's not just a nice thing to have, but it's important because if you're working, let's say, with subcontractors and you're not familiar with who these guys are, it might be worthwhile for you to have an image of that subcontractor. Make sure that they are the ones that you've signed your agreement with because you don't want some you know, overnight uh, contractor to stop on by and make a substitution on a project. And here in the Washington, D.C. metro area, security is also a big concern. So you want to make sure that that contractor that's coming on board looks like the contractor that you have in your schedule. In addition here to uh, people as resources, as we scroll through a couple of the resources, you can also look at equipment. So we can take an, equi an image uh, screenshot of, a, um, of some equipment and you can put them in the schedule. And of course the costs and any uh, group identification you need. So that's our resource view. So let's come back to the schedule and well let's assign some resources to our project. Again, in Fast Track Schedule, always a few different ways of going about and adding information in. So if I switch over to a layout, and sure track layouts are layouts in Fast Track Schedule, layouts are layouts. So I'll switch over to uh, a resource layout where it has the names of already assigned resources, and I can pick and choose a resource if I want to add, say Alex Silva, or I can also double click on any of the projects. Well, let's just come over here, and I can pick and choose. Go inside the tab that says Assignments, and I pick. I just scroll to the next task. We also support effort-driven scheduling, which is clicked here. So if I assign a resource to a task, let's say in this case, this uh, logs activity, and it's four days, when I assign that second resource, it'll shrink to two. And also you might have noticed that our date lines are an important part of Fast Track Schedule and SureTrack, or as they call them, site lines. In Fast Track Schedule, we simply just need to format this and we could pick through a bunch of different date lines that are available to us. So if I want a custom date line, let's say I want to show that our center line verification, which starts on the 13th, um, we should have a line that goes through that task. So I come to custom date and then I pick the day. And again, that's the 13th of July. 
And there we go. Now we have that center line good to go. One last thing here when we're talking about the creation and resources is that with your resources in SureTrack, they make it available that you can see them, your resources in the schedule view, the Gantt chart. Well, faster schedule, we also provide that support. So all you need to do is go to our view and click on percent work usage. Now, if I click on any of the tasks, make this a little wider here, we can see where the resources are allocated and how they're allocated. In this case here, we see Marco Eddy, for example, is over allocated. So let's look at the second phase of our project schedule workflow, the management side. In SureTrack, four of the big areas that we want to uh, look at are your reports, your cost, your critical path, and your revisions. Okay? And these are easily adaptable to fast track schedule. So the first thing that, that we talk about that we want to show, you just reduce the size here. And you can see how it has this accordion look where it resizes all of your timeline. Very nice. Is our critical path. So by clicking on this button here, it's not going to sh it's now going to show me where my critical path is on my tasks or my activities. Okay, now let me go back here, and we're going to switch layouts a second. We're going to go to our back to our main layout, and so let's switch over to our cost layout. Now again, layouts here they're defined. We have different layouts available, but you can create and customize your own. You don't have to use what we provide you. So if I switch my cost layout, I can see different costs. Now I have these three rows columns here: total cost, resource cost, and fixed cost. I can come into the fixed cost and I can simply just arbitrarily put any number I want. And you'll see as I do that, the summary graphs below that show me these costs increase accordingly. Now these summary graphs are equal to the columns. So any column I create, whether it's an imaginary cost, a hard date cost, it doesn't matter. I can then also relate that and provide that into my summary graph. So if I add a couple of more, you can see the costs increase. Okay. Now budget. Now budget is a is a uh, a column that we added that I just added for the presentation, and you can easily track well your budget. So if I add any amount that we start off with, let's say. It's sixty thousand dollars. Okay, what you'll see is that this is going to be utilized as part of a calculation in a few minutes. Look at our timeline graph. And then we'll add one more. Okay. So how is this being utilized? Well, one thing I want to track in my project is going to be um, some calculations. I want to be able to see exactly where I am with my with my budget budget against my total costs. So if I come here and add a new row, so our new column, go to calculation one. Let's do an if then statement. These are very easy to, to enter. I just go find my if-then statement, scroll down below, and I basically want my budget, if my, if my um, total cost is greater than my budget, then we have a problem. If not, we're good. So we'll look at budget, budget is less than total cost, then we're okay. So we'll say on target. If it's not, we'll have a little a more dramatic response. No more money. Does not get more obvious than that. Check that calculation, hit okay, 
And you'll notice here, calculation has updated, and it's providing us with that textual information that is going to be a lot easier for us to track than comparing this number to that number. So let's name it, call it budget status. Hit OK. Neat thing now is I can take this budget status and I can dock it anywhere I want. Move it over here to the right. Now it's right in between. So as I'm going through my schedule, I can take a look and I can see that my columns, uh, that my budget status column is nicely and clearly identified. So last thing to really talk about as it relates to our uh, management um, project work schedule workflow uh, is going to be the um, the reporting side of this. Okay, how can I show where I am on a project? Faster schedule. You'll notice that we have filters, filters just like SureTrack has, and we have some predefined filters, but we also have the ability to create our own, of course. Now I've added a couple called exterior codes and ex excavator jobs. So let me switch our layout. We'll go here to our WBS and code layout, and again, these are um, code codes that I entered into the schedule. And you can create your own. Come here to filters, and I say, show me all exterior codes, all codes, activity codes that are named exterior. I select it, and there you go. It's going to show me the projects that have the exterior tag to the activity code column. Then when I come back down here, I can reset everything and bring it back to normal by clicking this red button. And I can do the same for that next filter, excavator jobs. Show me all projects that are um, assigned to an excavator. Click excavator job, and these are all of the tasks that are assigned to an excavator. The neat thing to here in Faster Schedule, and we won't go into this today, but you can actually create fast steps. And what fast steps are are macros where you're going to tie together multiple commands, filters, sorts, you name it, and it will go through the process of tying them together. And you create that once, you click that that command, and it runs them all at one time. So what a lot of customers like doing is running a few different reports, then saving and posting those files to an internet or to a website for the customers to see. So if you have customer A, customer B, you want to show them their specific task and where they stand, uh, where the projects stand for each customer. Very useful, very helpful tool. Let's go back here to, of course, our PowerPoint slide and look at the next side of the project schedule workflow. And that's going to be presentation. And really, when it comes to presentation, there are no equals to fast track schedule. Now, when we look at SureTrack here, we can see that there are a couple of presentation qualities to this schedule. You've got an image, a header footer, and a legend. Now, when we go to fast track schedule, we can see how we can expand that. So now we made the switch here, and we're into our custom home schedule, nice schedule that has a uh, lot of images, a lot of scheduling qualities to it. We've got, of course, your log cabin custom home image. Uh, who doesn't need a log cabin? Uh, but also you've got your text boxes. These are notes that you can put inside your schedule that's going to point out specific items to a task that you might want your client or your team to know about without them having to hunt and peck for information. So if I know a task here has been delayed, I can write a note that mentions the reason. So this was delayed due to excessive rain. But we also have a lot of other areas you can put notes in. I can look at this little note field here on row three, and I can type in anything I want and it tells me, okay, I have a note. But you can also create notes and unique notes by just entering new text columns. And here I just created one that's called an activity note. All right. Now the other thing here that's really nice is the images. And not just this image here, but it's the site images. Faster Schedule is the only project management tool that allows the incorporation of images into their schedules. So why is this important? All right, we talked, mentioned, okay, it's great to have an image for a presentation, but when you're working on a site, a lot of times you're gonna be, you're gonna have your digital camera with you, and you're gonna be taking status pictures, updates of the project. Being able to add that to your schedule is very nice to have. And very important because if something's delayed and you want to have provide some documentation on it, use that digital picture, incorporate it into the schedule. Or if you have some plans that you want to show, well, you can add them to your schedule as well. Take that picture of the of the uh, rendering or uh, 
the schematics and enter them into the schedule. Let's go over to our print preview. This was that fourth view that I had mentioned earlier. In here, of course, you have your headers, uh, footers, any information you want to provide on the schedule, but you also have your legends that you can add and you can put anywhere you want. If I don't like this background color, I simply format it and change the color of the background. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. And we can, of course, also zoom in and zoom out of our schedule and look at all the details of our project. Now, if I wanted to take this and I wanted to print this, we can print it. We can print it on plotter landscape paper. It's great for printing. But if I wanted to, I can also export this out as a picture file so I can send it to a client. So I show them the phases or the status of the project as I see fit. Don't give them the option to be able to make changes to their schedule. Or we also export out as other um, with other applications. So you can naturally export this out as a um, picture file. If you do use MindJet Mind Manager, you can use that tool as well. But also a calendaring tool. Fast Schedule exports out as ICS files, which are opened by either Outlook or iCal on your Mac. And of course, we also support Microsoft Project Files. We we support the XML, which is a, the later. Uh, file extension standard, but also MPX, which is Microsoft Project Exchange. And what that allows us to do is work with maybe some older files of project or in older versions. So you have those options uh, in addition to uh, some others. And if you want to also open up Microsoft Project Files or MPX files, you can do that as well. You just need to just go to our open button and you have the option of opening up XML and MPX files. So that's the presentation side of Fast Track Schedule. Now there's a lot more to the program, but that's in comparison to, to SureTrack. We want again to relate to SureTrack as it is with Fast Track Schedule. So let's have a look at the benefits of switching from SureTrack to Fast Track Schedule. First off, it's easier to use and learn, which means you're gonna have a higher level of adoption and acceptance amongst your staff. That certainly helps out with project morale, and hopefully it means that your projects will get done better and in a more efficient way. The second are lower costs, and there really are endless reasons as to why it'd be beneficial for you to adopt a program that's less expensive. So I'll let you fill in those blanks there for endless reasons. Your better presentation means you're gonna, it's going to have a higher resonance with stakeholders. And not just that, so when you, when you go to provide your proposal on a bit of a project, it stands out. Hopefully it means that you'll be closing and receiving more contracts. Newer technology. A newer technology means there's less of a headache for IT and your end users. You don't have to worry about, well, is this version compatible with my operating system? Or if I adopt a new tool, is there going to be an issue getting support because it's no longer supported? And that technology area for us ties into an iPad version. Faster schedule is going to be coming out in an iPad version very soon here. And that's going to be mobility in the field we see a lot of contractors, uh, a lot of users in the AEC environment who are using the iPad and mobile technology to update their clients, to get data back to their office. And we see that as a great place for Fast Track Schedule. And that just about wraps it up for us. Uh, I wanted to thank you for attending today's presentation, replacing SureTrack with Fast Track Schedule. Now, just a, a few items here I just wanted to make an announcement on. The first is that AEC is working on a new release of Fast Track Schedule 10 that will open .xer files. Now, the release is going to be free of charge for registered users of Fast Track Schedule 10. So the .xer file format is supported by uh, Primavera products. So keep an eye out for that. And as a thank you for attending today's webcast, a 15% discount on all of our products until the 15th of August, 2011. So go to our website, acsoftware.com, and buy anything you want and at the end you'll get 15 percent off your entire order and it is the summertime so if you're looking for a pretty cool t-shirt to stay cool in the summer months go to our facebook page and like us so go to facebook.com slash fast track schedule and if you like us we enter you into a daily drawing for a t-shirt giveaway and as you can see they're pretty nice looking t-shirts i have 17 of them so but none in red I want the red one. So thank you for taking the time again for attending the uh, webcast, replacing SureTrack 
with Fast Track Schedule. I'd like to open it up to any questions. And again, thanks and have a great day.